Arctotus simus was once the largest predator to ever roam North America. This massive bear weighed over 2,000 pounds, with razor-sharp claws and jaws that could crush bone. But how'd they evolve to become such successful predators? And what led to their sudden disappearance 11,000 years ago? In this video, we'll explore the fascinating evolutionary history, range, diet, and unique adaptations that allowed Arctotus simus to thrive in diverse environments from grasslands to glaciers and everything in between before its inevitable extinction. The evolution of the giant short-faced bear began with Pliinarctus, a North American genus of bear that appears in the fossil record sometime between 7 to 10 million years ago. Its fossils have been found across continental North America. The bear was between 200 and 400 pounds, comparable to the size of a modern black bear. Scientists believe that around 2.5 to 5 million years ago, a branch of Pliinarctus evolved into Tremarctonese, the family that includes all the short-faced bears, the sole surviving member of this group today being South America's spectacled bear. Their separation from black, grizzly, and polar bears becomes obvious when looking at their unique coloration, with black or dark brown fur and a distinctive beige or whitish marking around their eyes, which resemble an eyeglass or spectacles. The exact evolutionary path of Arctotus simus is still the subject of scientific debate, but the general consensus is that after Tremarctonis separated from Pliinarctus, smaller, short-faced bears eventually evolved into larger, more specialized, giant short-faced bears. These start to appear in the fossil record 800,000 years ago. Current evidence suggests that Arctotus simus originated in the western portion of North America, due to the oldest fossils being found in California and the surrounding areas. Additionally, studies of the geology and climate of North America suggest that during the late Pleistocene epoch, the western part of the continent was particularly suitable for the habitat of such large mammals, including bears. This region had a diverse range of habitats, including grasslands and forests, as well as a moist and mild climate that provided abundant vegetation and water sources for herbivores, which in turn supports large predators like Arctotus simus. According to the Alaska Quaternary Center, a key adaptation Arctotus simus had was long legs, increasing their strides and also increasing energy stores, which allowed them to have a long home range, searching for food and resources in many locations. They likely ate a wide variety of foods, including meat, fruit, and roots. Its short snout might have allowed it to more easily access food sources, such as tubers and underground roots in forested and tundra environments. In addition, Arctotus simus had a large body size and a thick coat of fur, which likely allowed it to regulate its body temperature in many varying climates. This and more allowed the animal to thrive as far north as Yukon and Alaska, as far south as central Mexico, and as far east as Virginia. There is some debate as to whether the short-faced bear was a hunter or a scavenger. There is also a debate as to whether it feasted on mostly meat or a balance of meat and vegetation. There have been bite wounds found on animals that have been attributed to the short-faced bear. Whether scavenging or hunting, it was likely they feasted on the same animals, which could have included bison, deer, caribou, and mammoths. With regard to the carnivore versus omnivore debate, Arctotus simus had a relatively small, rounded premolar and molar, which may have allowed it to more effectively crush bone and consume tough plant material, suggesting it was more likely they had an omnivorous diet. All the attributes described up until now not only allowed this animal to survive in North America, but thrive. Its large strength and size allowed it to kill or steal almost any prey around, its long legs allowed it to conserve energy, and its wide dietary capabilities allowed it to chew through tough bone and plant material. It is no wonder they had such a widespread distribution, and if they are doing so well, then why did they all go extinct? The giant short-faced bear went extinct between 11 and 12,000 years ago, and their decline and eventual extinction is still not fully understood, but there is a wide variety of contributors that have been theorized. The first is climate change. During the late Pleistocene, the climate of North America underwent significant changes with the warming temperatures and changing precipitation patterns. These changes may have altered the distribution and abundance of prey species, making it more difficult for Arctotus simus to find sufficient food. A second factor is competition. Brown bears and humans had migrated from Asia, targeting the same food sources shared with the short-faced bear. There is little to no evidence to suggest that humans hunted the short-faced bear to extinction. It is likely that it was a combination of all these different things, rather than just one sole cause. Although Arctotus simus is no longer with us, their legacy lives on. Fossils of this species have provided scientists with valuable insights into the evolution and ecology of bears, as well as the climate and landscape of North America during the late Pleistocene. They also serve as a reminder of the incredible diversity of life that once existed on our planet. Please like and subscribe if you want to hear more animal facts like this.